Hello everyone, it's Mike Levin from MikeLevinSEO.com and on our last video we had a great success filling in a spreadsheet key, pressing Piculate and having these question marks replaced with the function output. And on today's video, on this video, as much as I'm tempted to jump right into the file upload issues, uh, we have a little bit of adjustment to do here. So right now, pipulate is just being called without any um, arguments. And then I spin through two different uh, approaches for, uh, for pipulating local and <clears throat> Google Docs. Local being the CSV file. And then I do both of them. And on the last video, I edited out the comma uh, local here so that both methods were applied for the sake of testing. Now, <clears throat> what you're looking at here is not only this loop, but it's also a, um, the Pythonic uh, approach to a switch. So I'm going to get out the loop so you can see the fact you're looking at a switch. A switch in Python uh, starts out by creating a dictionary and then plugging a uh, user provided key into the dictionary and invoking that dictionary call as a function name because um, this is actually going to invoke either db local or db gdocs, which is, is right beneath it. Now, from what I just did, removing the loop, there is no longer a DB source. That was provided by that outer loop logic that I just deleted. See, for DB source in uh, this short list. So I am going to take in DB source as an argument or parameter, whatever you want to call it to the function. So now it is a switch in the very pure Pythonic true sense. There's a DB source and then there's a DB method and then you plug DB source in as a key to DB method which calls a function of the corresponding name. It takes a little bit of time to wrap your mind around it and even to recognize what you're looking at when you're looking at it. And the way to tell is you've got uh, the Python dict or dictionary API up to this point. So you're just plugging a, a key in and you're getting a value out, but you are invoking it as a method, uh, a function method. And you can recognize that by the open close parentheses immediately following a dict object. Your Python programming will be so much cleaner and easier once you wrap your mind around this, this little fact. But now pipulate needs to be fed an argument. And that was done right at the point where uh, we left off here. And uh, so now we're feeding it uh, G, let's see, that's a G docs, G docs, I believe is the way we do that. Yeah, G docs, that's the key right here. That's the reason I'm feeding it as a parameter up there. So G docs uh, comes in through here as the provided key and gets used as key down there and invokes. Uh, db gdocs, which is the next function down. And there should be a little bit of logic surrounding this. And I guess it goes something if form.gkey.data colon. And then that way of uh, invoking it. And then the alternative, if forms, not forms, that's plural, it's got to be singular, form.csv file is the other way it's done. And we can tell that by 
looking at the form right up here, there's a field named CSV file. So if that one has data, and I'm also doing the win-loss scenario here, actually it will do both if both are provided, and that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess it does. Um, Pipulate gdocs. And then I pipulated. And uh, so it should give us the, uh, uh, I'm gonna make some uh, more useful uh, feedback. Instead of I pipulated, on this one it's gonna be return I pipulated Google spreadsheet. And on this one, it's going to be, I would have pipulated, uploaded CSV file, right? So that's the feedback we're looking for on an upload if no key is provided. And uh, as usual, we check to make sure I didn't introduce syntax error, which it looks good. And now I can uh, see what an empty form submit will do, as expected. But now I can choose file, give it the sample file, pipulate. I would have pipulated, uploaded CSV file. And that's all I'm gonna do on this video, uh, but this sets the stage perfectly for handling the file upload and you know, doing the question mark replacement in the CSV file and then presenting a link back to the user for immediate download, which there's a lot of decisions there. Um, this is where we start thinking about how and whether we're gonna handle uh, scheduled tasks, whether we're gonna retain the file, whether we're gonna accumulate, you know, uh, differently named uh, versions of the output file using the same input file as a template over and over so that you can accumulate enough data for scheduling, uh, for trending, which when combined with scheduling gives you, you know, really remarkable uh, starting to approach the offerings of high-end social media monitoring products, which is, of course, where this is going. Uh, it's kind of like the anti-cloud movement where you see products showing up on Indiegogo for the uh, private, secure, personal cloud. This Pipulate project is firmly in that same camp of the anti-cloud movement so that all these high-end, expensive, you know, pay-as-you-go uh, social media tracking products are no longer necessary because you're running it out of your house. And if you encounter, you know, difficulty with data storage uh, or too much traffic coming from your IP, this will work with proxy servers and cloud drives if you need, or you know, if drives are cheap. You'd be able to just plug in a new, you know, terabyte drive as it fills up if it ever reaches that point. Um, and there you have it. Thanks for joining me. Can't wait to get to the file upload portion. But that'll probably be next week because we're going into the holidays, and I'm going to be away for a few days. Uh, hope to talk to you soon. Don't forget to subscribe.